Hello everyone, my name is Pepsilk and in today's video we're going to be looking at Hull Divers 2. Now, this game came out of nowhere. It was a game that I wasn't expecting to blow up. It was a game that is a sequel to the original Hull Divers game, which is a top-down shooter of the same sort of structure of how this game goes, where you, you know, kill bugs and complete objectives, but nothing, nothing like this. Like, the numbers for this game have really soared in the last week. He can have 202,000, which is just insane for, a, especially like a, like a PC uh, PlayStation launch. I believe it's the highest it's ever been for a PlayStation PC game, um, topping God of War. So, and I think another reason why the game has blown up out of proportion is because of its low price. Like the game is like 60 bucks and in the modern gaming era, it's, um, it's very rare to have a game for 60, be priced at 60 AUD or thirty dollars in america however it may be over there i'm not actually sure but it's still that 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 is really exceptional for a double a game like this made by arrowhead game studios which is also the same company that made the original of the the first hell divers game and i've never played the first one prior to it coming out as well i didn't watch too many trailers outside of that first reveal trailer that they showed when uh it was like what six months ago or a year ago something like that and yeah, I really enjoy this game. This game is so much fun. I've been wanting to play a new co-op game since Dark Tide, as Dark Tide's gotten a little stale now, thanks to the you know lack of content. And hopefully, Fast Shark has some things planned for that game this year. But outside of the older games like you know Deep Rock and Payday Two, there hasn't really been a good co-op game, uh, something like this at least that has come out. So Hell Dive is pretty much the latest addition to the co-op horde shooter um, genre, and yeah, it's a blast. And we're going to go through it today. So if you enjoy the video, like, subscribe, and notifications turned on for more gaming content. Let's get into it, shall we? So a quick breakdown of the game's story before we get into the meat of it, since the story isn't that big of a deal here. But basically, you're a hell diver that fights for a, um, a company known as Super Earth. And 100 years ago, there was this great galactic war, aka the first game. And now the galactic war is back, where these bugs and robots or creatures are like tr supposedly or trying to take our freedom away so you fight for liberation democracy and freedom that, that's pretty much the story in a nutshell yeah so hell divers 2 prioritizes gameplay over everything else and it works incredibly well for this game this game in in, in terms of the gameplay loop and how it feels it's great i would also consider it to be like even though it's a horde shooter it can also be considered tactical as well depending on what difficulty you play on uh, and also how aggressive your team composition is. So you'll have, you know, you'll have games where maybe you'll play a bit slower or you have games where you play aggressive and you're just taking out bugs left, right and center just really fast. We're not how like, you know, how much your team has played and, and how good they work. There's plenty of difficulties to choose from and the game will ultimately get slower as you go up thanks to the armored units that get added in, which are like these big guys. So you've got like charges that go right at your face. You've got lightly armored enemies um like these commanders and these guards and these like hive guards and yeah there's a bunch of army units that get added in as you go higher and higher and the game will just get progressively harder so i think i think that coupled with you know what you gotta equip for those scenarios will ultimately decide on whether the game is fast or or slow but i feel like even with a stack team it'll still be pretty fast as well but yeah it's, it just depends the gunplay is good, offering players the option to switch between third person and first person whilst aiming. So when you're aiming to sights on any gun, it'll start off as third person. And if you click the scroll wheel, it'll it'll go into first person view, which zooms the camera in a bit and just helps to easily control recoil of guns and just makes it easier to see. Personally, I've been playing on the first person perspective. I just think it looks a lot better. Uh, and it's, you know, as I said, easier to control recoil on certain weapons. But there are also niche weapons like the auto cannon or the rail gun, for instance, where I think it benefits more from having a third person zoom in. More so because they're slow firing and don't have any like recoil attached to them. So personally, I think for those sorts of slow firing weapons, it's best to keep it on the third person. But it's all personal preference. So pick what you want and go with it. Stratagems or cheat codes, as I like to call them, are essentially kill streaks that you can call in to rain down on your foes. So you've got like napalms, barrages, rockets, sentries, and support weapons to help you liberate for democracy. And I say they're cheat codes because you have to input directional keys before it pulls out in your hand. And though I didn't like it at first glance, I started to like it after figuring out the stratagem loadout that I can run. Uh, stratagems are in cooldown after use to prevent spam and the game from being too chaotic and too easy. So 
Because if you were able to call in the stratagems constantly, like a bunch, just a barrage of rockets all the time, it would just, it would make the game way too easy. Each stratagem has its own cooldowns. Uh, it's also dependent on which, like, types of stratagems that you pick. So you got, like, eagle stratagems, which are very quick and have more uses. And then you've got orbital strikes or orbital stratagems, which are longer cooldowns, but deal a lot more damage. Only four stratagems can be brought out during a game, and you'll be earning more as you level up and purchase more of these ordinances. Movement is very important as staying on the move is important for dodging enemy attacks, primarily projectiles and charges. Diving is your best friend and has helped me in tons of situations such as cleansing status effects, shooting while moving backwards, and avoiding those close-up melee attacks. And overall, I just think the diving is just so cool to see, especially when you dive in off like a ledge and you get like these ragdoll animations of your body just falling all over the place. It's really goofy and funny. Mission types vary from launching rockets to eradicating bugs, destroying nests, and even killing some bosses. They're simple and easy to follow, and I'm not sure if the maps are procedurally generated or not, but from personal experience, after a while they do begin to feel familiar, but don't ruin the overall experience. Side objectives include taking out nests marked in red, and blue objectives, which also vary from an artillery turret, which you can use as a stratagem, radar towers that give you full information of the map, and destroying structures. The swarms in this game are called bug breaches or bot drops if you fight the robots, which come at random intervals in a game and you'll be able to see what it looks like when they come in. Just like in Payday 2 or Deep Rock, you fight it out for a few minutes, it dissipates and it's relaxation time until the next one. I believe, like, well not believe, I think they work on some sort of timer. Please, someone please verify in the comments because at times it feels like whenever you encounter an enemy, like after a few minutes, if you even if you kill them quick enough, they eventually just like send out. They, they eventually just trigger like a bug breach of some sort. So I think it may work on a timer, but we'll, we'll have to see if people figure it out in the subreddit. Or I haven't seen anything on it yet. The more objectives you complete, the more experience and requisition slips you get, which you'll see in the after mission report shortly after extracting, incentivizing players to do God's work and try to complete as much on the map as possible. Friendly fire is a thing, so watch out and try not to kill your fellow Helldivers, but if you do, just use freedom as an excuse, reinforce, and pretend it never happened. The best advice I can give is to start on medium for the first few games, then immediately ramp up to challenging once you have some anti-armor equipment. That way the game becomes more fun on challenging, as I think it's a difficulty everyone should aim to go for if you want to balance experience, as Anything below challenging, like medium is okay, but the other difficulties like easy and trivial or whatever the heck the zero difficulties, I don't know, there's one more I think, I can't remember. Um, anything below medium is just way too easy. I don't, think, I don't think the game will be as fun. I think challenging is the all in all ultimate difficulty that everyone will probably end up playing once we get enough time into the game. And I just think that's the way to go. There's three types of progression in Helldivers 2, which are ship modules, stratagems and war bonds. Uh, ship modules are upgrades that give you additional bonuses for the stratagems that you use, such as lower cooldown, increasing the number of uses, and giving sentries more ammo and health. However, I find the modules to be extremely grindy and it can take hours to get depending on how you're playing the game. You earn these modules by finding samples out in the world ranging from commons to rares and super rare samples, all marked in a specific color and spawn depending on difficulty, with green spawning the early difficulties, Oranges spawning from challenging and up, and super rares spawning from, I believe, suicide and up. I haven't gotten up to that difficulty yet, but I think it's from suicide. They each spawn together when you go up in difficulty, so it doesn't feel like you need to be on a certain difficulty to collect these. These are acquired by looting points of interest found on the map, and nests which will occasionally have some lying around, so be sure to look after clearing your nest. POIs also contain weapons, super credits, and requisition slips. Two different types of currency, credits for the premium war bonds, which I'll cover, and requisitions for buying stratagems. The grind part comes from having to collect all of these in a game, and since it depends on whether you're playing solo, quick playing, or with a hardcore dedicated force stack who has tons of hours and knows the areas off by heart, you're not going to be getting all of these all the time. And since there's no way of showing samples on the map other than the radar towers I mentioned earlier, which helps you pin out, pinpoint all of the like diamonds on the map, which are pretty much where samples can be found, there's no other way to find those samples and most of the time you get into a level it's always rng so it'll, it, it it won't always be at the same spot from one game to another so that's something to consider when collecting these samples which i feel like if you're especially with a um with a solo quick play stack of random players or just solo queuing by yourself it's going to be 
really annoying to try and get those samples. And I just feel like coupling that with the current progression bar that the game has, where there's partial progression rewards. So sometimes you'll get all of your samples and other times you won't. You only get like maybe a quarter or like half of it. It's very random, but I think with that bug, it's a problem. And I think the cost of the module should be reduced across the board to make it easier for players to access these upgrades faster. And it's not like the upgrades are too game changing either. Like if it had more of an impact, like a damage increase, then I understand entirely, but it just takes too goddamn long. I have only 20 hours of in-game time and I've managed to earn six of the 18 modules, which to be fair, that's a third of the modules. And I feel like that's a good amount of time, but given that the others just are going to take arguably longer, especially the super rare ones, it's yeah, they, they need to reduce like something just across the board. Stratagems are relatively easy to acquire on the other hand, using slips earned from missions. There's plenty to choose from and each offer up their own uses, cooldowns and damage factors, so choose whatever tickles your fancy. Another piece of advice I'd give is to find what types of stratagems you like and build around it to make your own build and or roll. So for me, I want to be a damage dealer, so I run orbital and eagle stratagems alongside a damage dealing support weapon like the grenade launcher or auto cannon. Eagles are also nice to have because they get additional uses, have a lower cooldown and can be rearmed or not in use, giving you more damage potential. So if I want to run, if I want to run around orbital and eagle stratagems, I would prioritize those upgrades for my ship modules. If you want to make the the grind, I guess. I guess more worth it instead of just going one each. I only picked one of each um, of the modules from the ones that you can pick from because I wanted to get the achievement. But if you wanted to be specific, you'd go, you'd pick the, the stratagems that you like and then just go from there. So if you want to go for the sentry stratagems and do like a like a full defense build, then go for the sentry stratagem. Warbonds are the battle passes of Helldivers 2, only this time, they're not really battle passes. They just sort of look that way from a first look, and I don't blame anyone that says battle pass here. I even said battle pass myself. You earn medals from finding them out in the world and completing missions and operations, which you then spend here to unlock gear and weapons. As you go through them, you'll begin building up your inventory, opening up new options and ways to go about fighting for freedom, and boosters which provide buffs to the whole team. There's also a second premium war bond, which you buy with super credits, which can be bought with real money, earned in game from points of interest, or bought with medals in the previous war bond, and basically just gives you more rewards to earn. I've seen a lot of people get annoyed about this and call it pay to win, but it really isn't since you have to earn the medals to get everything in here anyway. If it was pay to win, you'd, you'd be able to pay for it upright and have access to the rewards instantly. Performance has been a bit iffy to say the least, though, at least for me. On my RTX 3080 with an AMD Ryzen 5 3600, my FPS averages from 60 to 80 in non-combat areas and dips way below 60 to about 40 to 55 whenever I'm in combat, which is fairly low for my rig and I'm not sure if I'm to blame for my performance or the game is. However, a driver update alongside a stability update dropped yesterday and my performance has gone up a bit, resulting in just over 60 FPS majority of the time now, which really helps a lot to make the game feel a lot more smoother to play. I've also heard issues of AMD graphics cards having significantly bad performance across the board, no matter which AMD graphics card you have. And hopefully that becomes high priority once they get the servers fixed. And maybe the latest update did something, but I'm not too sure. Resolution scaling settings are also whack with every option other than super sampling, of course, looking blurry, like it's got some sort of Gaussian blur applied to it or something. I tried adjusting the sharpness and graphics settings, but it didn't do much. So I decided to stick to native resolution until it gets fixed, and which I'm going to assume it's probably a low priority fix for now. And I haven't really seen anyone complain about it in the subreddit or the discord. So it seems like people have just kind of coped with it, or maybe I'll also just stick into native resolution. But I think with how it looks, it's just, it's way too blurry. And I ideally would love to play with DLSS because, you know, DLSS or, or the resolution scaling being put to quality. Outside of the ship module grind, the only other problem I have are the servers, which have been all over the place since launch. I remember day one when it came out and we had the fail to connect server issue. They hotfixed that immediately, but after like playing for a while and trying to quick play queue into a match to find other players to play with, I kept getting the same fail to join every lobby message every single time. And for a day one launch to have simple co-op functionality not work, it just, it really... It, it was a doozy for me. Like, I wanted to refund the game. And, you know, it just wasn't good. 
But the devs have explained that it's due to the amount of players that are trying to log in and server capacity that has resulted in matchmaking being broken. And they've been very vocal about fixing this issue. Something that I know that once it gets fixed, the game is going to be even better. The last few patches have been have helped to reduce um, that quick play fail to join lobby issue. I still get it every now and then, but I mean, if you just spam it, you're, you're going to get a game eventually. So it's okay. Or you can always host your own. Sorry, you can always host your own game too. Helldivers 2 is a great co-op game and probably the best co-op game I've played since Deep Rock Galactic with plenty of fun moments to have, fantastic replayability and lots of options. I can't wait to see how they expand the game with content and the best part is, it'll all be free. I didn't mention the robots because I haven't had much experience with them yet but all I can say is, it's like you're in the Terminator Wars when you're in there and you gotta be more active when you're in there as well. I'm hooked and I hope more people jump into it and it seems like people are since the player count like I said, did jump to 200,000. So there's definitely going to be a lot more people. And there's probably, that doesn't in include the PlayStation Play account as well. So, and yeah, that's it for the video. If you made it to the end, thanks for watching. If I missed anything, comment down below. And as always, I'll have more coming to you soon. Peace.